I want us to please, if you don't mind, you know, celebrate the Lord in the lives of the virtual church members and thank God because I know they are there, divinely connected to this service. Glory be to God. I know the year is running to an end and there's a tendency uh, for a few people to want to lose hope. God will do it again. He has healed before, he will heal again. He has provided before, he will do it again. The final say has been our theme for the month of November. And last Sunday, I, I took the final say part one. And we'll continue this morning uh, with the final say part two. And as you know, we have been studying from the book of Acts right from the beginning of this year. And our theme text for this month is Acts 23. 11 to 14. Acts 23, 11 to 14. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome. And when it was there, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying, that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great cause, not just a cause, under a great cause, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Beloved brethren, ladies and gentlemen, in God's dealings with his creation, from generation to generation, he will make promises unto performance. In other words, for anything that God will want to do for any one of us, it first exists in a promise from him, and then it takes a process unto a performance. While Abraham was, Abraham was childless, God made him a promise of becoming the father of many nations. When somebody has no child at all, God came to him. In Genesis 17 verse 5, Genesis 17 verse 5, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. He had no child at all. Everything that God will do for his creation will begin with a promise and a process unto performance. The deliverance of Israel from Egypt was promised before the birth of Israel. Genesis 15 verse 13. Genesis 15 verse 13. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. In Genesis 15, Isaac had not been born. Not to talk about <laughs> Jacob that we know as Israel. But God had released the promise. Joseph's greatness in life was promised in two dreams many years before the fulfillment. You can read Genesis 37, 5 to 9. David was promised the throne while King Saul was still on the throne. 1 Samuel 16, verse 1. The virgin birth of Jesus was promised many centuries before Virgin Mary was born. Isaiah 7, and in verse 14, Isaiah 7, verse 14, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel in Isaiah. Isaiah 7 verse 14. The great-grandmother of Virgin Mary had not been born. Talk less of Virgin Mary herself. God's dealings with man begins with a promise and then a process onto a performance. Promise, process, performance. God is a scriptwriter. 
I think it was the last Holy Ghost service in Nigeria <laughs> that Daddy Gio was making reference to Shakespeare's statement uh, that described you know, the world as a stage and men and women are actors. And when they are done with their role, <laughs> they exit. God is a script writer of world's events and we are all actors on the stage. The performance of the intended vision usually comes under attack. Check through the scriptures. Every pronouncement of the promise from God to anyone is usually followed with pronouncements of attack, an attempt to end the promise before the performance. In the text that we read, Acts 23, verse 11 came a clear promise, direct promise of God to Paul, Apostle Paul. Verse 11, Acts 23, and the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also at Rome. Clear promise. In verse 12, the Bible says, and when it was day, the promise came in the night. Less than 24 hours, when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. In other words, this promise of God to you will not come to pass. I want to prophesy to your lives. It doesn't matter how many people had gathered together, maybe 20, maybe 40, maybe 100, to stop the promise of God for your life. When they are long gone, you will still be here enjoying the promise in the name of Jesus. Paul was very, very familiar with this experience because in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, he says, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. God opened the door and there are many adversaries. Confrontations, attacks, and obstacles are all parts of the movie production to bring a script to the realities. Paul was very familiar with this. In 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 18, the first day I read this, <laughs> this scripture, I was very surprised until I began to gain insight into the operations of God's promises and the performance. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 18, Wherefore, we will have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Every promise will always come under an attack. When it was the time for God to fulfill the promise of bringing Israel out of Egypt, there was a serious resistance and a terrible contention from Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Exodus 5, 1 and 2. Exodus 5, 1 and 2. You remember before God had made that promise. Now it's time for the fulfillment. In Exodus 5, 1 and 2. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thou said the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. <laughs> I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. By the time Israel had gone, he was drowned in the Red Sea. Everybody, try, anybody trying to hold you down, they will go for your sake. Those who are saying you will not see the year 2022, they will go for your sake. Let me hear a resounding amen. Because in the final analysis, he pursued truly. He said, no, Israel, you are not going anywhere. I said, don't worry, don't leave him. And God buried him. The, the first and the only time that the Red Sea, a sea parted. The people of God went on dry ground and Pharaoh and the entire host of Egypt drowned in the Red Sea. King Saul made several attempts on the life of David to stop the promise of God to make him the king in place of Saul. King Saul did everything possible to kill him. But you see, in every of the script, the script writer has the final say. Over your life, the script writer is the almighty God. And everything he has ordained must come to pass. As you very well know, King David got on the throne. The barrenness of Abraham and Sarah became hopelessly hopeless as to make the promise of God of no effect. But Isaac came. 
every promise of God to man will always come under attack as to make the, prof the promise of no effect. The brothers of Joseph conspired to hand the promise of God to make Joseph great. Oh, they did everything. Read the story, Genesis 37, 18, 19, and 20. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. See, the problem was the dream. <laughs> this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast had devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. They must be jokers. Everyone standing on the way of God's dream for your life, they will go for you in the name of Jesus. When the promise of the virgin birth of Jesus became a reality, Herod made frantic efforts to end it. In so doing, he wasted many lives. You know the story. In Matthew chapter 2, he ordered that they should go and kill children two years and below, hoping that one way or the other they will find the, the new king. God, they told him that another king had been born. Ah, in this, in this place. But he couldn't. How do you kill the savior of the whole world? After baptism at Jordan, God the Father made pronouncements about the Son in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And right after, Satan came to tempt the Son. Matthew 3:16 and 17, the last two verses in chapter 3. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight, to, straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened upon him and saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. End of chapter 3. Chapter 4, verse 1. Matthew 4, verse 1. Right after. The Bible says, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Anytime there's a promise waiting to happen, there's a, a conspiracy attempting to stop it. God is a scriptwriter of world's event. We are the actors on the stage. The performance into the intended vision usually comes under attack. But the scriptwriter must have the final say. No matter how severe the attack may be, I speak into your life one more time. All the good promises of God for your life and your family will come to pass in the name of Jesus. In all cases and in every life, God has the final say. The conspiracy of Joseph's brothers could not stop his greatness. The conspiracy to keep Paul could not stop the promise. But it's important for you to know that while I'm waiting for the fulfillment of the promise, are there things I must be doing? Of course. And we have, I believe, about five lessons quickly very, this morning. The promise has been released already. And the promise says to you that it shall be well with you. The promise says to you that you will end this year well. The promise says to you you will enter the new year triumphantly. The promise says to you that you will not die young. The promise says with long life I will satisfy you. The promise says you will prosper and be, and be in good health as thy soul prospers. Is God so, so talking to somebody at all? Come on, let me hear if you believe in him. Amen. But there's the promise, there's the performance. In between the two is the process. Number one, hold on to your dreams no matter the opposition. What God has revealed to you must come to pass no matter the challenges. No matter the challenges. I've told you before, God led us to this place, 5371 East 5th Street, Katy, Texas. We had 6.23 acres of land at that time. We have a tiny building, 2,000 square footage. God sent somebody to tell us that he has been waiting for us. Now is the time we are here. But then we were in that courtroom at the city. But about six of us were there. Nine of them voted that this church cannot start here. Only one person, actually, out of the nine, was stayed neutral. He didn't vote. But we are here. 
And we are not just here, we are here really, really very strong. I mean, we moved from 2,000 square footage, I mean, to 4,000 uh, square footage, and now we are 30,000 square footage here. We have 115,000 square footage there. We have a ma massive campus. Now, come on, give the Lord a really big hand. We are so present here that one day, uninvited, the mayor came by himself. And was a volunteer at our food distribution line. Isn't God good? Come on, give this God a, re a very big hand. <laughs> what God has revealed to you must come to pass no matter the challenges. But the tendency sometimes is that, you know, the pressure is too much and we can't hold on again. Uh, some people let go too quickly. Number two, because there are contentions, you must fight the good fight of faith. Oh, yes, there's a promise. But there's contention. <laughs> I had a story sometimes ago. I think one man, very poor, the, you know, <laughs> didn't have you know, food. And somebody brought food with chicken and something. And so he just went to wash his hand and they cut. <laughs> came and <laughs> tried to grab the chicken the guy, <laughs> the guy pounced on the, on the car took the thing from the mouth of the thing wow. when something's about to steal your promise are you just going to be looking like that some people are looking no more let me say no more we must fight the good fight of faith and I love Apostle Paul's approach to the fight Three prescriptions he gave as touching fighting when there's contention. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16, say, Rejoice evermore in praises. Put very simply in that verse, just two words, say, Rejoice evermore. Beloved brethren, we don't know the power in praising God. Oh, I have seen. You know, tremendous manifestation of God's power when you praise God. I can tell you many, many testimonies. There was one our father and God shared many years ago. A wedding was going on. An attack came just after they did the vow. Because after the vows and all that, and they preached the sermon, they went to the vestry to sign. And as they were signing, the groom passed out. <laughs> so they didn't know what to do. And then an instruction came, continue to praise God. And we are praising, we are praising God and praising God. Very soon, the groom woke up again to life. Come on, go ahead and give the Lord a big hand. One of our pastors in the United Kingdom had a similar experience in his church. His church was very small then. They were having a wedding. And as they finished the vow, the groom just passed out. So you remember the testimony that Daddy, Daddy Gio shared. It's okay, no panic, everyone. Just leave the man. Is, just stand up and let's be worshiping God. According to him, say, oh my God, if nothing happens here today, this church will be empty next Sunday. God, do something so that this church must be full next Sunday. As they praise God and praise God and praise God and praise God, the groom just rose up again to life. Come on, let somebody shout a really big hallelujah. And when I was a very, very young Christian, maybe like six months in the Lord, or a little bit more, my neighbor, they got, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, wedding this month. They are neighbor, they got married. And in the night of the wedding, they just returned back home. My apartment was down, they were up above, above my own. And then my, they knocked on my door because the groom was vomiting blood. So they knocked my door, I got there, I was a very young Christian. Ah, I said, if I lay hands on this fellow, maybe I will be vomiting blood too. I'm just telling you the truth, I was, I was afraid. Then I remembered, they said, oh, if you don't know how to pray, then praise God. So I began to praise the Lord. So the woman looked at me like, I asked you to come and pray for my husband. You are singing. But as I sang one chorus, I sang the second one, the blood stopped. She joined me. And then we are now a choir. We began to sing. And we began to sing. And the blood stopped. I am praying for you. 
what prayer has not been able to do the praise we surpass in the name of Jesus so Paul admonished rejoice evermore and it's in praises of God that we rejoice but he also said in verse 17 of first Thessalonians 5 verse 17 say pray without ceasing and by the way one state house of praise around the corner that's why I know that the devil cannot stop you from getting to the new year and the victory during one state house of praise will last forever in the mighty name of Jesus for seven straight days we praising the Almighty God here non-stop non-stop the power of God will come down like never before if I were you now you want to mark your calendar how many hours per day you want to do it's a time you want to take time off work if possible at all that's what you, you, you want to do I always stay in the church you know the, the entire time do everything in your power you want to enter the new year with with praises of God lavishly and use watch and see how God will lavish his grace and power upon you too I can't hear a good amen, amen. but then Paul said pray without season brethren there's power in the place of prayers oh yes I can I'm a, I'm a living witness when we pray God answers John 14 verse 14 says, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that's why I also want you to know that from December 11 to the 17th, we are going to be having what we call 7 by 7 altar. It's the third edition. God has helped us in the last you know, two years. This is the third one. For seven days, we'll have nine vigil for seven hours in this place. From 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. Every day for seven days. Now, when you combine prayer with praise, huh, I thought somebody will really, really just get excited. Because in the prison, the Bible says that Paul and Silas, they prayed and they praised and there was a shaking. God came down literally and everywhere began to shake. I am praying for you. Even before you get into the new year, the almighty God will bring a shaking. Every sickness will give way. Poverty will give way. Sorrow will give way. Death will give way. Shame will give way. Reproach will give way. In the name of Jesus. And then Paul gave us the thought in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Most outstanding miracles of Jesus Christ. Watch, read the scriptures. He will say, I thank you, God. He was going to feed 5,000 people. I thank you. John chapter 6. He was going to bring Lazarus forth from the dead. Lord, I know you always hear me. I thank you. Those who know how to thank God, their thank never runs empty. Let me move on and close as quickly as I can. Number three, the lead actors don't die in movies. Otherwise, the movie comes to an end. So are you not permitted to die until the promises of God are fulfilled according to the script of God? I say you are not about to die. You are the lead actors. The movie is not over yet. You are going to be here much longer than the enemy can ever imagine. Can I hear a very believing amen? amen? The conspiracy to kill Paul couldn't be accomplished because he must get to Rome. I mean, I was on a bad flight. I mean, the worst flight I ever took. I was really, really afraid. I mean, the pilot said, I've never... I and mean, since that time, I never encountered a pilot like that. The pilot said, look, the cloud is all around us. I don't know what to do. <laughs> there was a guy, there was a guy by my side. The guy said, you see, that he was going to, I think, Bonnie Waterside last week. And the boat capsided that he should have died. So at least God has given him one week extra. <laughs> that was my neighbor on the plane. He said, are you afraid? He was asking me. As after a while, when the pilot wasn't saying anything again, he said, well, I know what that pilot is doing. He wants to go and land in a place called Ilori, and in that airport, they have no light. I think this plane is going to crash. <laughs> that was my neighbor. But after a while, I remember that God had told my wife and I 
that he was sending us to a far country. We didn't know where it would be to preach the gospel as missionaries there. So I said, well, I've not been to that far country. This plane can crash. Everything God has said concerning you, the Lord will bring to pass. You are not about to die. Oh no, you are not about to die. In the name of Jesus, can I hear a roaring hallelujah? And I stopped listening to the pilot. I stopped listening to my neighbor. I began to praise God. I began to worship him. There are sometimes manipulations to end the destiny of some children. Even before birth or right after birth. These children always turn out extremely great, fulfilling purpose. <laughs> Moses was to die as an infant, but ended up a deliverer. Baby Jesus was to be killed by Herod because of his shining star. But how can anyone kill the savior of the world? It doesn't matter the conspiracy. It doesn't matter the manipulation. Everything God has said concerning you, concerning your children, concerning your spouse, will still come to pass in your lifetime in the name of Jesus. Number four. You must recognize that the promise of God for your life is the final say. And although there are contrary voices, the loss must have his way if you don't quit the stage. In Acts 23, verse 14, Acts 23, verse 14, and they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great cause that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. They are joking. I'm sure they died of starvation. Don't sell God's promise. For your life because of the challenging realities of today the challenges are ladders to fulfillment that promise must come to pass don't quit the problem is that people quit too early when the city said we are not able to start the, the the church here and that went on for 11 months we are paying the mortgage there is no church there is no we are just moving from house to house sometimes in my house sometimes in Pasebuna's house sometimes in Kuma's house i mean we couldn't start some people came and said, ah, they're just wasting money. Sell this land, get the money, and then buy another one. It, it, it sounded logical. Many people had sold the promises of God away for their lives. They said, no, the Lord said, this is where the church is. Don't sell that promise. Oh, there may be pressure, there may be challenge, there may be issues. But please, don't let go of that promise. This one of our family in the church. She was pregnant. And then they go for antenatal and the doctor says, this baby, no heartbeat. So after a while, I can't remember, maybe four or five months or so, they said, well, there's a procedure we can do. I don't know the name of the procedure. I don't try to, to know them. They are too long and confusing sometimes. But anyway, so they said the procedure that they will do some transfusion inside from the mother to the baby, but the, the chances are 50-50, something like that. Ah. So they came and said, I don't like 50-50. 50-50 is, um, well, let's, let's put our trust in God. They said, that's what we thought too. We just wanted to agree with us. And I remember, we're sitting in the youth church. We go to the altar, we will pray, and then they will still go. One day they will see uh, whatever they call the albit. Another day they say, there's no, so don't worry. When the baby talk full time, it's going to say, you're going to deliver this baby? The baby will, cannot be normal. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Thank God man is not God. So the baby came, they ran all the tests, the baby was normal than normal. <laughs> Even as a baby, can't remember now, she must be about 10 years old now, as one of the most brilliant girls around here in church. If you are clapping for the Lord, go ahead and, and give the Lord a big hand. Each time I looked at her, I smiled. Even her, she doesn't know. There are many children where people had agreed to kill in the womb. 
I had a testimony during the last, um, I don't know whether Abuja Holy Ghost service, I must be, I think it was the Abuja Holy Ghost service just this last Friday. A woman was promised a child, you know, and then became pregnant of a set of twins, and then they, they then discovered that the husband is AS and herself AS. The doctor started saying that, well, you know, it's, you know to go and have sickle cell would be a problem, uh, we will check, and once they are sickle cell, they, we cancel you, let's just take the children away. Say no, you can't take them away. Those children were born, A A, the two of them. <laughs> who has the final say? I mean, over your life, who has the final say? Let me close. The suspense in movies makes the end a sweet ending, and the suspense in your life is working out a sweet ending. <laughs> I mean, your life might have entered suspense now. If you watch movie very well, <laughs> the end is always very sweet. I and mean, your end will be sweeter than your beginning. In the name of Jesus. When it seems you don't understand what's going on in your life, be rest assured that suspense in life makes a sweet ending if you keep the script of the script writer. Suspense in life's event is puzzling and full of uncertainties, but has a sweet ending. Number five, this you must pay attention to. Know that if the actor fails to play his role very well, there are substitutes waiting on set at location. David replaced Saul, 1 Samuel 16:1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill thy own with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. First Samuel 2, verse 30. God put Eli and his household as priests, but God said, no more. That's why I want to encourage you to please play your role well. God has given each of us a glorious role to play on the world stage. And I know that because in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Third John 1, verse 2, Third John 1, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. We only need to play our roles very well, not to be substituted or dropped altogether. Those that don't play their roles well, they are substituted and they are replaced. Can we rise? If you are clapping, then clap very well for the Lord. Let your clap be unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to pray very quickly and say, Father, say loud and clear, Father, frustrate the conspiracies against my life and family in the name of Jesus. Frustrate the conspiracies. Frustrate the conspiracies. Frustrate the conspiracies over my life. Let the conspiracies be frustrated. And I want you to pray and say, Father, help me to hold fast to your good promises for my life and family without wavering. Help me to hold on. Help me to hold on. Help me to hold on. My Lord and my God, please help me to hold on. In the name of Jesus. And then pray, say, Father, have mercy on me. And don't let me be replaced in destiny. In the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Don't let me be replaced in destiny. In the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, don't let me be replaced in destiny. In the name of Jesus. And finally, say, Father, please bring to fulfillment all your great promises for my life and family. Bring to fulfillment. Bring to fulfillment. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The only one who will be a loser is the one who is not born again. But the Bible says, say you to the righteous, it shall be well with him. Please surrender your life to Jesus. When the enemy comes against you, you don't have the power to fight them. It's Jesus who can fight for us. 
That's why I want you to pray. If you are not born again or you are a backslider, and say, Lord, have mercy on me, save my soul. I confess my sins before you this morning, and I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that you are the Savior of mankind. Forgive all of my sins, I'm born again. I give my life to you this morning. If you pray that prayer, I can assure you it's as simple as that. You are saved. Just make sure you reach out to us on the numbers that will be shown on the screen. And I am telling you that the good promises of God for your life we become a reality soon in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I want to thank you for your word. Even as we have prayed, King of glory, frustrate the conspiracies of the enemy over our lives and families in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to hold on, immovable, steadfast, all the way. We receive that grace this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bring to fulfillment all your great promises for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. For your children who gave their lives to you this morning, please save their souls. Yeah. Keep them to the very, very end. Yeah. As this year is going to an end, oh God, every promise that must be fulfilled this year, they will not be carried over into the next year in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Release the blessings unto all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We promise all the glory will be yours. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you receive yours, go ahead and give the Lord another round of applause. And then you may please be seated.